Let's reset that so you actually have a microphone. All right, good, good. Check, check. All right, let's gain that up a little bit so y'all can hear me. There we go. All right. Okie dokie. So, let's see, the plan today is we are going to make some pasta. Um, we're going to make some ravioli specifically. Uh, that'll be stuffed with a butternut squash filling. So we're going to do that. Uh, and then we're also going to do, uh, I think we're going to do some madelines while we wait for the, uh, the dough to kind of do the dough thing that dough does, right? Um, it needs to rest. So let me make sure. Let's see, let's put it up there. That we're doing this, let people know, right? That's kind of important. Um, all right, so let's just retweet that. We ran a cable all across the house to make this happen. So, so hopefully we'll see what happens. So in any event, let's, uh, let's get started. If there's anybody in chat, be sure to say hi. Um, what I've got going right now, the only thing I've done ahead of time is I've started my boiling water because it's a big pot, gonna take a while. Uh, and I started roasting the butternut squash. So let me grab them. All right. They are, they are very toasty. So you can see here in our little can. Um, all I did with these guys was I just... Uh, put some uh, olive oil on them, a little salt and a little pepper, that's it. Uh, nothing too fancy, I probably over roasted them here a little bit because I was running around like an idiot so they got an extra 10 minutes, um, but that's okay for what we're doing. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take some of these. Now, you don't need a lot um, for the filling because let's be honest, the filling is going to be uh, you, you, you don't use a lot. So we're going to we'll take out some of the smaller pieces that are a little darker. Um, because they're going to be a little crispy and we kind of want nice smooth texture. All right. All right. Um, while this is warm, I'm just going to give them a quick mash. Right, we just want to do that and uh, it will definitely be the time that we'll, we'll think about what we're going to do with it. But we'll probably season this a little bit more later, but it's a lot easier to mash while it's warm. All right, and then we want this to cool down a little bit before we go scooping it on a ravioli because what will happen is if it's too hot, it's going to make our ravioli a little mush. So we're just going to do that. All right, that's good. We're going to set that aside. And we'll come back to that. So let's talk a little bit about pasta dough. So pasta dough is a, it's a pretty basic dough. Uh, it's nothing too crazy, too fancy. Um, very, very simple. Four ingredients the way I make it. So there's not a lot of craziness going on here, but this one and well, all does, right? It's all about the technique. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with regular flour. Now I use all purpose unbleached when you can get it. Um, and we're just gonna take about a cup of this. It doesn't have to be perfect. And we're just gonna dump it right in the middle of our workbench. All right, so there you go. It's a pretty good middle, right? 
so you can see what's going on here. Now I have one egg and that's going to be very important. Uh, I just use a large egg. Now that is going to be one of the determining factors as to how big of a batch you're going to make is how big the egg is. Um, so just the largest typical. Uh, so we're doing that. How you doing Patrick? Long time no talk sir. All right, so I made a well and what I did was I just took my bowl and I swirled it around and I want it to be bigger than the bowl. Um, then we're going to take this egg and we're going to whisk it up really good. The other thing is I'm going to put a good pinch of kosher salt in with my egg and a little bit of olive oil. Just about maybe a teaspoon or two not a lot it's going to help make the dough soft and silky so we want to do that all right and then we're going to drop that right into our well now all those all the fancy pictures you see of people making pasta they always have the you know that well sitting in there and they put a fresh cracked egg it's a lot easier and a lot better to kind of scramble the egg and also put the salt in there because look at it this way all of your pasta will definitely get all of the egg, but it may not get all of this flour. So for a little pro tip, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of use a bicycle motion here. We're going to kind of do this up, down and around. Um, and then I'm just going to just slowly start grabbing some of the uh, flour from underneath. Not a lot. Okay. It doesn't take, doesn't take too much. All right, now I'll also tell you, I'm probably gonna go a little faster than I would at home. Hey Chris, how are we doing today? You made the broccoli soup, it turned out great. Awesome, good to hear. It's a good soup, right? I just roasted some butternut squash for my filling and of course one butternut squash is ridiculously huge, right? So I'm gonna actually probably use the rest of that and make a butternut squash soup with it. Very, very similar to the method I used for broccoli soup so cool cool all right so as I'm doing this I'm just kind of slowly bringing some of the flour in all right we just want to slowly keep adding it into this mix and what we're shooting for is we want to incorporate the flour bit by bit you can do this with the machine and that's fine um, but I you know, if I'm just doing a simple one egg, one cup batch, one egg to one cup of flour, what this is, uh, that's enough for my wife and I, then that's all I'm gonna do, right? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother cleaning everything up and making a huge mess just to make one pasta ball. It's just not worth it. All right. So we're just gonna keep going, going, going. And once it starts to look like pudding okay when you can see how it's still a little runny all right I kind of want it to be really really thick I'm gonna start then up and how fast I incorporate my flour we're gonna go around yeah so I'm trying to decide what the heck I'm gonna do next week I barely decide what I'm doing this week right all right so now you can start to see it started to come together so I just kind of pulled in a little bit more but I'm not gonna I'm gonna take my time here all right should take a good 10 minutes to make this dough don't try to rush it if you try to rush it you'll wind up with a dough that's gonna be very very chewy or it's not gonna be having a flour all right this whole cup now depends on how big your egg is where you live uh, the altitude the humidity that day like a lot of things are gonna change how much flour your dough will absorb. All right, now as you can see, it's kind of, this is like what we call um, in baking, shaggy. All right. Ooh, make the hanky-panky. Yes, the hanky-panky. That would be a good drink. You know what, Eric, or uh, Patrick, there is, I don't know why I do that all the time. Um, there is a, there's a guy on YouTube uh, who does how to drink and he makes incredible drinks. Uh, and he's he's a lot of fun to watch. If I were ever to do a, a YouTube bartending show, man, whoa, 
recommend his. All right, so what I'm doing is the dough got, the, the dough started to come together, it got that shaggy. So now all I'm doing is I'm switching to my bench scraper. Now, if you don't have this, you can use a spatula or a knife, okay, you don't have to. The bench scraper just makes your life infinitely easier, okay? Now, I don't wanna incorporate all this flour in one shot, so I'm gonna move it out and around a little bit. And here's my dough, and as I flip it, I just pat it and flatten it. And then I'm gonna fold it 90 degrees the other way. All right, it's kind of a very loose, we're not really kneading it, because we're adding in flour, right? We're still still making the dough. Kneading comes at the, the telltale end. All right, I'm just gonna keep adding in flour. This dough is very, 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 very sticky and not firm at all yet. Okay. It should bounce back when I touch it. You can see how my dents here, if you can see it. Oh, good, the overhead's doing a good job. Uh, you can see it's, it's not springy at all yet. All right. And again, remember, I'm rushing a little bit. I'm probably going to make this a little harder than I should. All right. So now, now it's dry enough that I can work with my hands, and I'm just going to start again. I'm just keep adding flour at this point. Almost this whole cup should go in. It should be pretty close to this cup. So we're going to keep adding it in and then we're just kind of rolling it here a little bit all right now you could do this in a uh, food processor if you really wanted if you had one um, there are recipes that are better in the food processor than others because you need a, a better ratio of flour and um, egg so make sure that you get the right one and then it, it might take a little playing with. I would hold back on the flour initially. All right, while you're doing it. All right. We can probably knock out a quick batch that way. I'll show you real quick. Just so you can see it. All right, so this dough, this, this guy's coming together. All right, and you can see here now as I push on it, starting to spring back that's what you want all right if it stays dented and doesn't have any elasticity then it's not going to hold together all right so that's that's what we're looking for we want it kind of firm so we're going to keep going and just work in some of this flour work it in bit by bit all right it's all right you can take your time if you're doing a really big batch you could do this in a uh in a KitchenAid with the uh, the big bowl attachment. But I would argue my egg was a little small today, which is why we're getting a very small ball today. You know, there's what, a good quarter cup flour sitting out here. All right, it's starting to get there. So we're just gonna knead it for a few minutes. We're not gonna go too crazy. I don't wanna knead it too far. I just want it to come together. All right, and I'm just turning it, flipping it, and then pushing through, just like we did with in our initial step here with the bench scraper. All right, we're just gonna rock this around. Okay. All right, now I will tell you that I'm gonna be using a, a uh, mechanical, uh, mechanical, pasta machine that attaches to my KitchenAid. You can use a hand crank. Uh, for ravioli, you can even roll it by hand. Uh, here's, a, here's a trick though when it comes to ravioli by hand. Um, make sure that the dough really gets a good rest. Probably even longer than the 20 minutes that this guy's gonna rest for us. Uh, because that way, it'll have time to kind of calm down. And as you start to roll it, if it gets really, really, really springy, Put it back in the fridge, let it rest some more. All right, so 
we're gonna take this, we're gonna put a little plastic wrap. All right. And we're gonna put that in the fridge. Let's do method two. All right, oh, my cord's just not long enough, so you might not get the overhead. Let's see, when... there you go. Give you something at least, right? Um, so when it comes to the Cuisinart, What you're going to do is you're just going to dump everything in. All right. So I can reuse all this flour. So I'm going to take this. We're going to put this back into this cup. All right. So again, just one cup of flour. One egg. Our pinch of salt. And quick shot of olive oil. All right, don't bother using something else. If, we're gonna eat, if you don't have olive oil, just you can omit the oil. That's completely fine. All right, so make sure this guy is off. The difference here is when I use a food processor, one of my favorite settings for it is the pulse. So we're just gonna tap it, okay? Just tap. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for wet sand. That's kind of the texture. Only takes a couple taps. All right. Pro tip, helps if you close the refrigerator. So you can kind of see here, as I pinch it, it comes together. That's what you want, all right? And like I said, I put in a little less than a cup because if I put in the full cup, it probably would be too much. So now, guess what? Same thing as we just did, except we're gonna pick up at the bring it together and knead it stage. Now, if you need a little bit of cold water, that's fine. Um, just a little bit, try not to use much if you do need it, just to bring it together. But really, we don't wanna work it too much. I'm just trying to squeeze it and press it. All right, there we go, it's starting to come around. All right, believe it or not, this is this looks like really dry and crumbly, but it's actually pretty hydrated. <laughs> Chris, yeah. Well, I tell you how you figure it out. You go crack about a couple thousand eggs in a lifetime. Um, like I worked at Denny's for, oh, that was where I actually started cooking almost 30 years ago, over 30 years ago now. And uh, we used to have to crack eggs by hand, cases, 30 dozen at a time. And uh, you can get really good at a two-handed crack, let me tell you. All right, so now, guess what? We're just starting our kneading process. Just flipping and rotating it, and I'm pushing through it. But as you can see, that now now I have to clean my Cuisinart and I had to get it out. And let me tell you the flour and the egg, it tends to make a bit of a mess. So I don't know, I'm kind of 50-50 on which I'd rather do. All right, and I'm just gonna do this until it comes together and gets a nice smooth dough and it's almost there. So it's really firm, which is good. 
All right, let's do our finger test. Oh, it bounces right back. So now I'm just going to make a ball. I'm pulling the sides in together underneath it. And just kind of just keep crimping that, making a mushroom cap. And then we wind up with our dough. So a little faster in the food processor, but it's a little more messy, a little bit like that. I kind of like the tactile nature of getting my hands dirty, though, right? I like getting, getting to feel my dough. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to throw him right in the fridge. And he's going to need to rest for about 20 minutes. Okay. Okie dokie. So I don't think we need that for the second. We are, however, going to be needing this guy. Of course, I did that backwards, didn't I? Totally did. All right, so Madelines. Madelines are, are one of my all-time favorite, favorite, favorite cookies, desserts, thing to enjoy with coffee, just love them. And they're super simple. They don't take much at all. Uh, the recipe is pretty straightforward. But what they do take, um, typically, is a special pan, all right? So I get that. Uh, maybe you don't have one. That's fine. You could probably do just fine with a, uh, a cookie sheet. Um, or you could use like a muffin tin and just put a very small amount in them. I think both would be acceptable. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to start out with our bowl. I got my paddle. And we're gonna start by putting our dry ingredients in here first. So we have a couple things. So we have our flour. So this is a cup, uh, again, all purpose flour. By the way, it's a lot easier to fill your bowl when you don't have the uh, attachment on yet, I've learned. All right, uh, it's gonna take two thirds of a cup of sugar. We're gonna put that in as well. All right, uh, now, I like either honey or I like, uh, I'm using maple syrup because it gives some sweetness and it gives it some caramely kind of stuff going on. Uh, you don't need either, agave syrup would work just fine. Um, but what it does is it gives a little dimensionality to your food. Like if you use just sugar, it's gonna taste like just sugar. But if I use honey or maple syrup or something else, it gives it a little bit more, which is kind of awesome. All right, we're gonna put that right in the center. It's about a tablespoon, uh, honey, maple syrup, whatever you're gonna use. All right, uh, and then we're gonna save the eggs. All right, they're gonna come along in a minute. Uh, and then here, this is vanilla bean paste. So if you really want to work on like adding a few things into your life that'll kind of up your cooking game. All right, number one, I always recommend just switch to kosher salt. All right, kosher salt's wonderful, nice and easy to use. Uh, it has a lot of benefits to it. Uh, and I can go on and on and on, and I'll do that on a searing show. Maybe I'll teach sous vide soon. Um, but what vanilla bean paste does is it actually is the actual beans of vanilla, whereas extract is like, they take the hull and the husk and what's left over and they just soak it with an alcohol, like a rum or a vodka or something, and then that's it, that's all you get. Uh, and nowadays it's even imitation because vanilla is like the second most expensive spice in the world behind saffron, no lie. Um, but the vanilla bean paste is kind of like a happy right in the middle zone. It's pretty easy to get. 
you do not need to use as much. Um, for instance, I only, this recipe calls for, I want to say a teaspoon, teaspoon of um, this, and I'm probably only going to use a little over a half, okay, a heaping half, because it's a little more intense and a little more rich. Also, this is um, Madagascar. You can get Tahitian, which is a little more flowery and light. You can really start to tell the difference of the uh, vanilla beans. So if you want to up your baking game, there, there's one thing you can do. All right, we're going to put that in, and you want to get all that out of there. Use the best spatula God gave you. Use your hand. Get it all out. All right, excellent. Uh, and this stuff keeps, like, forever. Like, I've had this. Oh, my goodness. Trying to remember how long I've had that. Probably 10 years. 10 years. And it's still solid. Just keep the lid tight, clean it off, uh, and you'll be set. All right, so we're going to cream this stuff together. So I'm going to put my pad on. If you have one of these machines, getting one of the scraping guys is awesome. All right, and we're going to run this. Now I just want to get everything incorporated. As soon, as soon as it's kind of pretty well mixed up in there, um, I'm going to add my little pinch of salt because everything needs a little salt. Then we're going to add our eggs one at a time. And then once that comes together, that's our dough. And we want to leave it there. Now, this is, this is what makes this recipe so good. All right, this is going to take a full stick and a half of butter. Eight, 12 tablespoons. All right, and you need to melt it. All right. Um, now I don't want it screaming hot. I just want to make sure it's completely melted. Uh, similar to like when I did the crepes last week. Uh, I'm going to throw this in for a minute. And we're just going to let that melt away. Now I'll also tell you my oven's been preheating to 375, so it's getting ready. Um, we're pretty much good to go here. We're just sitting on that. And as soon as the butter comes in, we're gonna dump it in. But again, I wanna be careful. I don't want it like boiling and bubbling. If it comes out like that, give it a minute or two, because what it'll do is it'll just turn this into a runny mess, which is not what you want. All right, so I checked it at 40. Still looking a little rough, so we're gonna go the rest of the way to a minute. Should, should give you a microwave cam, eh? Let you see what's going on there. All right. So you can kind of see how the dough looks like when we go to do this. So I'm going to let that cool for a few seconds because if I just, like I said, if I can buy a few minutes or two, that's completely fine. So what I'll do is I'll just prep our pans real quick. So this is a Madeline pan, all right? Um, no, this is not something I've had my entire life. Uh, I picked these up last year uh, because I like Madelines and they're actually super simple to make. You're, we're almost done here. And they're gonna go in here and they bake in like 12 minutes. So it's even better. So having a good pan is key. So get one, you can use the same one. You don't need two. You can, you can only buy one, 15 bucks, I think. Um, but they have this scallop shape, which is what kind of makes a Madeline have this nice crispy outer 
skin that it gets, which is just magnificent. Uh, and then it kind of has this nice spongy soft top. So um, highly recommend if you get one pan, just get a good non-stick one. These guys, you're gonna see when we're done with this, I'm gonna spray it, but they just kind of pop right out. So I'm just gonna, I'll take out a little insurance and just hit it with a little quick pan shot. But I could literally just, I could do both of the, uh, both of the trays. I could do one, come back, and then do the other. It would be just as easy, so not a problem. All right, so our dough, soft. We're gonna pour this in slowly. Slowly, don't dump. Really should never dump anything unless there's a very, 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 very specific reason to dump. This is not one of them. Because you're, you're trying to suspend this butter and this fat inside here. So if you try to do it too fast, it'll just, bleh, it makes a mess. Notice I only have this on like a medium no. Do you, Madeline by the seashore, Patrick, you, I don't know. Sometimes I, I don't get them, I just don't. All right, and we want to go just till this is incorporated. So when I start, I see the shine that's kind of gone. That's what we want. Perfect. Seashell pants. Okay, now I get you. The mixer will be making a return visit. So here's our batter, right? It's a very, very, very thin batter, which is great because it makes scooping and pouring and everything very, very easy. The only problem is because I like Madons and they're so easy to make, I'm gaining weight like you wouldn't believe because I can't stop making them. So we got our pan and all I'm gonna do, so you can do a, you can use a tablespoon. Um, you know, I use a little ice cream disher. Uh, this is, there's all numbers on these guys. There's on the handle and on the scoop blade uh, and that tells you how big they are. So the higher the number, the smaller the scoop. The magic is the number is equal to how many scoops go in a quart if you really want to know. But there you go. Now you now you do and you can't unknow things, right? Oh, well, I suppose you could. All right, in any event. Now that paddle with that scraper side, look, you can see in here I have no I have no like flowery bits in the bottom or anything. So it really does a good job of scraping it. If you do not have that, you may need to scrape down in the middle, and that's completely fine. Um, now about two thirds of a scoop for me. And I'm just gonna pop that in each one. All right, we don't wanna overfill these. We won't, this will expand a fair amount. We're just gonna boop. So this is, uh, if you're wondering, this is a number 40 scoop, which is, oh my goodness. I use this thing. This is probably my most used scoop. I use this for meatballs. I use it for cookies. Uh, if I'm making muffins, whatever. It's uh, if you buy one scoop, and you can, of course, guess what? Big surprise! You can buy it on Amazon. Um, a number forty is a great scoop to have. Just look it up. Number forty disher scoop. Depends. We call them dishers because you know fancy restaurant people. All right. Now this is going to get really close to, let's see, this is 30, this is four by five, so 1632. Um, yeah, I wouldn't get 32 out of here unless they were very thin. I usually get about 24 here. is a 
good enough. I'm happy with that. You have one extra here. All right. So there we go. You don't need to mess around with pants. You don't need to tamp them, knock out the air or anything like that. Um, they'll do just fine. Now I'm gonna go throw them in the oven and I'm gonna put them on the middle rack, 375. Now my recipe likes to say 10 to 12. I start checking them at nine. They get done super quick, uh, especially if my oven is, is pretty on the, on the ball. So it definitely cooks fast. And you want to try and keep them in the middle. And let me tell you, these guys cook stupid wicked fast. All right, so put on my nine minute timer. All right, now let's get back to our pasta dough. Um, specifically, let's get back to our filling. So we had it started, all right? It's right here, it's a little firm, right? Um, we, we had a little little excess uh, crispiness, which is cool. Now, this by itself, butternut squash is delicious, but this by itself is boring. It, it doesn't taste like anything. Um, so we definitely need to season it. Now, I would almost over season a little bit, okay? Because Think about there's there's a little salt in the dough, um, but we really want to pack a lot of flavor in this little bit of filling. All right. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is instead of um, instead of the ricotta or pepper, I'm going to use some uh, some nutmeg. Nutmeg. Hi, Alex. How you doing? Oh, Sweden. Hello. That's awesome. Hope you guys enjoy. Um, yes, Patrick, absolutely. The pasta dough needs to rest at least 20 minutes. Um, we're almost there now with ours. So fresh nutmeg. I told you earlier about using vanilla bean paste being great. Well, not fresh nutmeg is amazing. And you just need a microplane to use it. You just buy a little bulb. And it's great in anything that's savory. Uh, I love it with ricotta cheese and cream sauces and potatoes. I made a, a potato gratin the other day and I used a little fresh nutmeg, delicious. All right, we're just gonna grate some nutmeg in here. All right, so not too much. Just gave it a nice dusting. All right, now, this is nice and firm. This is kind of what I want, all right? We're not putting a ton in our dishes, we're, we're, or in our dishes, our raviolis. We're gonna use a little bit, okay? I think I'll, maybe we'll see if I can show you the super special ravioli I do at work occasionally. Um, we're gonna give this a quick taste. Definitely taste the nutmeg, definitely taste the salt. That's it, perfect. Okay, nice flavor, and I don't want to. I don't need to add egg. I don't need to do all that because this is going to be nice and firm, and it's going to help help stay together inside the pasta when it goes through the cooking process. All right, for the sauce we're going to make, um, I I have a I used to have an herb garden, and one of the things that survived is sage, and I get sage every all year round practically. That sucker just never stops. So while we're kind of waiting a little bit here, give our pasta a few more minutes to cool down and rest. I'm just gonna pluck some of these sage leaves off. Super hardy, super hardy herb. Um, this and rosemary, if you wanna try growing a few herbs and you live in the uh, Northern hemisphere at least, um, highly recommend sage and rosemary. I've tried multiple times to restart my lavender. I've been very disappointed. I had a great lavender bush the first year. It was absolutely delicious. Made the best turkey I've ever had. I made some pretty good turkey. All right, and I'm just taking the leaves off. I'm gonna leave the leaves whole for our sauce. I think that's gonna be kind of nice. All right, just kind of plucking away. So, oh, wow, we need smell-o-vision.
You need to smell that nice, fresh sage. Love it. All right. Just do a little more. Let's see, we got five minutes on our time. All right, I'm happy with that. All right, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna turn our water water back up. Yeah, do you get it to come back, Patrick? Patrick says he does well with time. Do you get it to come back year after year? It just kind of self, what is that, perennials? Perennials persist and annuals are a waste of money. That's why I'm not really a gardener, right? Let us bring back our mixer. So my mixer has a pasta attachment. Now you can use the hand crank and the hand crank is completely fine. Um, you do not need to go spend special money, but I'll tell you a hand crank is a $60 tool to get a good one. And for this, it's like 90 bucks. So, and it gives me two cutters as well. So um, I, I was happy to get this. Actually, my wife got it for me for Christmas one year. It was fabulous. All right. Now, a couple things. Never, never, never put this sucker in water. You never want to submerge it. When I clean it, I just maybe use a damp towel and uh, there's a little brush that comes with the kit and that's it. That's all you do. Just knock it out. Uh, your dough should not be wet enough. Okay. It shouldn't, shouldn't be a problem. Uh, what I am going to do is I'm just going to get a little bit of flour. If you have semolina, that's completely cool. And I'm just going to lightly flour my work area just because this is probably going to be where our dough is going to go, right? So speaking of, we got three minutes left. Let's take a peek. Close, but no cigar. All right, so our Madelines are closing in. So we have our two doughs here. And the um, this dough is the one I made by hand and it's still kind of soft, which I, I kind of like. And then this one's nice and firm, but it's, both of them are bouncy. But uh, if, you, if you could really see good here on the, the film, you'd see that the firm one that we made in the machine is bouncing back a little faster, okay? Not a big deal. Um, it's also gotten wetter as it sits. That's what it likes to do when you uh, process in the machine because it takes a little, the flour is just getting introduced to the egg rapidly so it doesn't hydrate as quickly. All right, that's the big deal there. What you do not want to do, uh, as we start this process, you do not want to put a wet dough in your machine. All right, if you put a wet dough, whether it's mechanical or not, whether it's a rolling pin or not, uh, it will, absolutely um, just be a hot mess and you will get stuff everywhere all right let me see I'll pull this back so you can kind of see because this dial on the side all right this is very important okay the dial on the side is going to control the thickness all right now on my KitchenAid here it starts at one but on my hand crank unit it starts at zero it uh, doesn't matter where your lowest point is, that's where you want to start. So before I even get started while I'm setting up, I make sure I always back it down to zero because nothing can ruin your dough faster than throwing it in and it not being ready for you, okay? Or it's like on five because that's what you used last time. Now, I'm not going to start this until I pull those out of the oven because I want this, I want to start this process and keep it going. So what I'm doing is I'm making a disc. So I'm just trying to flatten this down, probably get it to about a three eighths, what is that about four millimeters, five millimeters in that range. Um, I want it pretty thin and I want it to be kind of, I look for like an oval, all right? Uh, if it's any bigger than this size, okay, it's gonna be too big and when you go to feed it, it's just gonna get really, really, really long, which can be a little, little much to deal with so we are going to give it a head start and kind of start by making it a small disky rectangle disky rectangle hashtag i like that one all right that's our nine. Oh, they look good 
Let me go grab them. All right. So how's that, huh? Look at that. So this is when you want to pull them out, okay? Um, it kind of goes a little against your nature because they, I don't want to say they look a little wet, but they kind of puff the top here and they break through a little bit and that's completely fine. But what you want to look for is this nice golden edge. This is, this is what makes Madeline special is this nice crispy golden edge. And uh, remember what I said about a good pan, right? Boop, pop right out. All right, um, if you leave them in the pan, they will potentially cook a little bit more. And these are just, just at the right temperature. So I'm happy to let them finish up. But if they went over and got a little dark, say, um, pop them out right away, get them on a cooling rack. Don't let them stack up because it's a very wet batter and they will stick, all right? Um, so let them go. Uh, and I like to eat these warm and I like a nice cup of coffee. All right. Now, now I'm making myself a cup of coffee. All right. That could be another good show. Coffee making. We could do French press. We could do pour over. Uh, I don't have like a, a mocha pot or anything, but got some basics. We could do some stuff. All right. So here is... Here's our disc, our, our ovally rectangle. All right, our mixer here is set to zero depth, all right, or one in my case. And I'm just gonna turn it on. I'm gonna turn it on very, very low because I don't want this to be fast, all right? So this, I think, is just on two, all right? I had to go and buy a... Uh, a new band here because my old one was completely scrubbed off so now I can actually tell you numbers all right and then just feed it in now if you can't feed it in or it's not grabbing uh, take the end and just kind of pinch it all right we're gonna turn it up one number so we're going up to number two we're gonna do the exact same thing just drop it in one number at a time Now, if you feel the dough is getting sticky, just put a little bit of flour on your fingertips, just like that, okay? And then just lightly brush. All right? You're, you're, you're done incorporating flour. That's not your goal. And a little goes a long way. Turning it up to my number three. We're gonna pause here so this is where we're at okay I have a sheet this is about 18 inches long now you can look at the ends the ends are pretty rounded all right but overall the shape of the dough is pretty good okay if your dough is just a long torpedo instead of a little square what you can do is we can take our dough and book fold it all right, so if you're looking, just fold it in half. All right, not in half, but stop like about your wrapping and package, all right? And then fold it back over the other way. All right, so what you wind up with is this shape, okay? Now, you have your, it's basically wrapped like this. So we're gonna take this and feed that end in, and that will help get it straight again. All right now when you do this is crucial you really only do this once and you do it when you get up to your third step and then we're going to go all the way back to zero in my case one and we're going to start over again because if i try to drop that in now it's three times as thick and it would just oh trust me the first time you do it you'll recognize exactly why i told you not to do it take your time and take each step gently all right now Drop this in just like we've done in the past. 
And notice it should stay a little, a little square now, right? Not as torpedo-y. And then now we're just going to walk all the way through till we get to our final thickness. And again, that's going to that's going to depend on the type pasta you're making, um, the dough you have, the machine you have. Uh, I like to say as thick as you want is when I'm able to look through the dough and really make out what's going on. Okay, I can I can do that here, but I have bright lights, so that's not going to help me at all. I've cranked up. This is four, so we're going past that that three that we stopped at last time. And you can see here now, especially with this top view, it's filling in our our rollers nicely, and then it kind of comes to this nice squarish end. So we're going to get maximum dough usage. That one grabbed a little quick. It's okay. All right, we're really close to where I want to be. All right, I can just make out my hand through the dough. Yeah, you can see that in the overhead, that's pretty good. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go one more step. So for me, that's a six, that might be a five, that might be a seven for you. All depends on your machine. Perfect, this is exactly what we want. All right, now another thing is, notice I'm using the back of my hand the whole time I'm doing this. And that's because if I use my fingertips and things like that, it's very possible that I will just tear this dough and rip it to shreds. So, you know, take off any rings or anything that might get in the way. All right, so now I have my sheet. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna really, really lightly flour this, okay? Semolina would be better. And then I can fold it over on itself because we can come back to that. I'm just gonna, again, when I flour, I literally put it on my hand and then just rub my hand. I'm not sprinkling or doing a lot of flour, all right? Now, let's speed through this last one real quick, get it out of the way. So I'm gonna make my rectangly disky thing. All right, I'm really happy with how my dough came out. It's really nice, it's really soft and supple which is exactly what I want. Start our machine up. Back to down to zero. In you go. Burp. Yeah, this dough. So this, this machine is actually going to need this dough a little bit for us. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do that book fold now, before we even get started. I'm going to do this once or twice. All right, excellent. One more time, and you can start to see it's holding together. I'm just going to get a little flour, because it is getting a little moist. In you go. All right. And we're off to the races. So, if you did this by hand, just make sure you get it nice and thin. That's that's the whole trick. And by hand, it's really tough. This dough is, is very springy. And as Patrick will tell you, especially if he was using uh, he wasn't letting it rest, that it gets really difficult and just keeps wanting to run back to its shape. And if it starts to do that, just, you know, again, cover it, throw it in the fridge for a little bit, and come back. It'll be fine. All right. Um, one of the nice things about the pasta is it cooks really fast, so you don't have to worry too much about that. Speaking of, I'm going to crank my gonna crank my water up to high so I get a nice rolling boil here. My water is not salted yet because I don't know how much water is in there yet and how much will be left by the time we're done. 
Got that silly little tail here. Not too worried about it. Again, just a nice loose grip on this stuff. I love this this machine because I love the height of it. Uh, which, if I'm using a little hand crank down on table height, uh, not good for us tall guys. All right. So same thing. I'm just going to put a, a nice little bit of flour here, fold it over. Come back, do the same thing. Not too much. I don't want to dry the dough out, but this is just enough to help keep it from sticking. All right. And also... Be careful to keep it away from the heat. All right, now, if you wanted tagliatelle, you could just take your knife and you could just cut strips. If you wanted to hand cut fettuccine, you could do that. Pappardelle is just really big fat strips. Uh, and last but not least, there's what we call the handkerchief, which would just be this whole sheet and right? cook it all at one time. Uh, if you were doing lasagna, you would need to do that. Uh, the sheets, even though they're soft and cook really fast, I tend to want them cooked in my lasagna. So I cook them briefly for that. Okay. Um, you don't have to. Now, here we go. We have our, we have our dough. We're ready to go. We have our filling. So we're going to knock this out. Real quick, I am going to grab an egg. All right, we're just going to make a quick little bit of egg wash uh, because this is the best way to seal your, your pasta. spoon what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make sure I have everything ready to go for for spooning the pasta here so let me get the second one out of the way so you can see what's going on now you have two methods here we can and and I don't care if you like this method or not we can make quick little envelopes So what we would do, trim that, maybe chop it up. You could have some, some regular pasta. What I would do is look at your, your piece here and just kind of picture a grid on it. Uh, when you have a nice big square piece, this is great. Um, and what I'm gonna do is take just a little pasta, just a little of the egg wash. Just do the whole thing. It's a little easier to egg wash it first all right, and then we're gonna cut it. Okay, so we now have this nice little rectangle. Now we do the whole thing at one time, to be honest. And we're gonna drop our dollop of our filling. But I would only do like half at a time. All right, then we're gonna fold this over, just like that. Now, a couple keys here. Number one is, I don't believe in the fork push, I don't really like it, but what I don't want is air. So go around, start at the back, and kind of just gently push down around the filling all the way around, just like that. Okay, and then just seal it with your fingers to make sure you got a nice seal, and you just made a ravioli, okay? It doesn't have to be super pretty. Uh, if you want it to be, go ahead, cut the edges. You can square it up, you can use a crinkle cutter, I don't care, okay? Do whatever you want. Uh, that's all it takes. Now, you can do the whole sheet in one time, but what I like to do is I like to break out some round cutters uh, and I like to make my ravioli generally, what I would like. These guys are pretty, pretty good size, so there we go. We'll go with that guy. All right, having a nice set of biscuit cutters is always good. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut all my bases. So we're just going to go along. And I'm going to cut half this dough as bases and half of it as lids. Big surprise, big surprise, right? Now again, I could make I can make different stuff. I could make half moons, no problem. I could, I'm gonna, I will cut lids for these, however, because what I like, I like big circulars, one, okay? That's one of my favorites. So save that, you can reuse it. You can do it like one more time. We could run it through the machine if we wanted to. All right, so we got our circles. So circle option number one, Again, just to give it a nice big scoop of that. We're gonna drop filling in. Little goes a long way, okay? That's like half a teaspoon, okay? Fold it over. And same thing, we're just gonna pinch around that edge and walk out all the air. The air just makes them float uh, and gives it a possibility for it to rupture. All right, so there we go. There's your nice half moon ravioli. But wait, you ready for the cool thing? If you do this half moon, I'm just gonna put a little bit of egg wash on the back, fold that side up, fold that in like that, and you make the little hat, and uh, now I got tortellini. That's it, that's all it takes. So, I mean, you guys have options now. You got lots of stuff, but we're gonna hustle through and we're just gonna we're just gonna make some circles and do the standard circle guy. And I can go a little heavier on the filling. than I did the last time. All right. Because these are gonna be a little bit bigger, right? So no problem there. And then let's get the rest of our sheet. So we got what, six here. Boom, boom, boom. Knew I was missing one, right? All right, then we're just gonna drop our lids. Ba -ba -da, ba -ba -do. All right, and then same thing, just walk it around, seal it up. All right, now the other thing I could do is I could do all of these on one sheet and then just come along and stamp them out to, you know, whatever works. Um, but you kind of want to have a bit of a production line. It makes your life a lot easier. How are we doing on time? Oh, we got plenty. What we're going to do is we are just going to throw these in the water. And while that is cooking, we will make a quick sauce. And we are going to go super simple. Now, I realize this is kind of like a fall recipe, right? Butternut squash and all that. So we're gonna, the sage is a very kind of fall, fall herb, which is cool. Just nice and earthy, reminds us of Thanksgiving and stuff. So um, I get that, but you could do the same thing with a nice asparagus topping. Uh, you could have, you could have some good fun with that. Now, I am going to need space, okay? Uh, I have my water and it is boiling. We got a nice rolling boil, all right? It is definitely what you want. You don't wanna dump these in. Be patient, all right? Start your water. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna season it. All right, that was about a tablespoon of kosher salt going in there. Just give it a quick mix. Why do I add it late? I'll tell you why, two reasons. I add it late because I don't know how much water is gonna boil off. I mean, this thing was on for an hour and a half, okay? Uh, number two is it also, if you have a reactive pot, like aluminum or something, that's actually bad for it. 
So we don't want to, to hurt our pot. So I'm just going to transfer this to this burner, which should be able to handle the boil, no problem, because I'm going to want this burner freed up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop these guys in once it comes back to a boil. Let it come back up. All right, and we're going to make a very small, very quick sauce. All right, I got a nice fresh clove of garlic, so we're going to take a clove while that's coming back up. Favorite thing ever, you ready? The whack. Give it the whack and peel it nice and easy. And I'm just going to chop this, and I want like nice big pieces. That's fine. The smaller you chop garlic, the more intense the flavor. So leaving it big kind of mellows that a little bit. I know it's counterintuitive, but when you see a big chunk of garlic, you know, it's not as potent as when somebody has minced it and put it in there. All right, because you haven't released all those oils yet. So what I have here is I have some fresh garlic. Uh, I have some, I have some nice butter. You got butter? I got that butter. I'll use the, uh, I use the refrigerated butter. All right, because all we're going to do is we're just going to make a brown butter sauce. So water is starting to boil again. In they go. I'm dropping them individually. Uh, if I have a lot, I like to make a little uh, tornado of water that helps keep everything from sticking together. And these guys, because they're fresh pasta now, are going to cook very quickly. All right, they're probably going to cook in the uh, probably about three to five minute range. Okay, so the other thing I want to do is just keep the water moving and make sure they don't stick to each other. A nice, very, very gentle stir. All right. If you did your job and you sealed it well, it shouldn't be a problem, but why tempt fate? Okay, butter into the pan. Butter is salted, so the butter is bringing some salt to the party, so I probably don't need to add a lot, okay? The salt that's in there is probably plenty. Um, let's see, can I get this? That kind of works, right? There you go. Um, we're going to melt the butter. All right, now I have options. Um, we can make what we call a buernazette, where I'm going to actually brown the butter a little bit uh, before we actually get ready to add our pasta to it. So we're just going to let this cook a little while. And I don't want to don't want to go crazy with the heat. We're just going to go with a nice medium heat. Um, I'm not trying to boil this. I'm not trying to, to burn it. There is a fine difference between burnt butter and brown butter. OK, and what it is is brown butter is when all the solids inside the butter have gotten nice and toasty. And that takes a little time to get there. If it's burnt butter, that means that you just burnt the fats and everything that's in there. That's not good eats. That's gonna be bitter and gross, okay? So brown butter, slower process. Can I reshape the extras, the cutoff, the trimming? Yes, yeah, so Chris, I could take this one time. Um, you could do it like one time is about all I do. Uh, and you could put it back in the machine and it would work. Uh, but you're absolutely right. If you were to do it again, then chances are you're gonna to totally overwork the dough. In which case, you're going to get a very chewy pasta, which isn't, that isn't great eats, right? So let's check out our Madelines here. Look at this. Look at this. These guys are awesome. They came out. Nice color. Really happy with these. Nice, soft, fluffy center. Or nice, crispy outside. Exactly what you want. I could eat that whole tray. All right. We're entering the home stretch. We're almost done. You have almost cooked dinner and dessert, right? 
Now fillings go wild, have fun, go crazy. I have this one filling that we make at work that is literally a ring of ricotta cheese around a egg yolk. Um, I was gonna make it for you if there was time, but it looks like I'm just closing in on that 90 minute mark. So I don't wanna go too much past there. But notice here the butter, it's getting a little foam, but it's not bubbling. That's what you want, okay? This is how I'm gonna get this brown butter. This is the best time once it's started the browning process, I'm going to add in my garlic. Whew. Just boom. It's flavor coming off that thing. I can smell it. All right. We're just going to let that cook for just, just a minute or two, and then we're going to take in our sage. Now, then I turn it off. This is about half that sage I, I cut. Probably too much garlic. All right. Now we don't need to add any salt because there's plenty of salt that came off of our butter, but I will add just a little cracked pepper. All right. So let's see what that color looks like. Let's come back here to the plate the plateau. All right. The other thing that, that's, that's a chefy thing is to spoon sauces rather than dump them. Uh, it allows us to kind of get a, a sampling of everything in each scoop. So there we go, our, our garlic got a little crispy, which is awesome, I love that. I don't know why I got that guy out. I'm gonna grab my happy spoon, happy spoon, happy spoon. All right, then we're just gonna set these just so if there's any extra water on them, they can just run off real quick just because I don't really want water in my sauce. Now that dough works. I could put it through the cutters, no problem. I could cut it by hand. Uh, now, depending on what you're making with it, might depend on how thick you want it to be. Uh, if I was making an angel hair, I would probably go another level thicker or thinner. Um, if I was making fettuccine, I would probably stop where I was. Um, you know, it's about, about 16th of an inch thick or a millimeter if I had to really kind of be put under pressure. All right, so the pasta's all floating. The dough is nice and done. And we're just going to pop some on here. Oh, look at that. We'll just kind of put them right on there. And what we're going to do is just get... Just a little more sauce right on top. It needs one thing, one thing. All right. Need to put some fresh shaved Parmesan cheese on this guy. Right? Boom, that's it. So we got some fresh ravioli. We made some fresh madelines today. We had, this was a great one. I, I love being able to do this. The This nice butter, with the sage, you don't have to add the garlic, that's completely fine, but that's just a nice, great, quick sauce. Works great on fresh made gnocchi, things like that. Highly, highly recommend it. Um, so, all good things. I, I'm really glad you guys all got here today. Um, I look forward to hanging out with you. I think we kind of had some ideas tossed around today about what we're going to do next week, so we will see what happens. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty stoked. I think we'll do something fun again. And uh, that's it. So 
Thanks for watching along. If you uh, enjoyed something, leave a comment. Let me know you got out of it, and uh, we'll see what we can do in the future. Otherwise, stay safe, have fun, and uh, have some fun cooking. I know I am. Do-do.